Hi, this is Christy Burcham with Embroidery Online, and I want to show you a quick tutorial on embroidering a t-shirt. We'll be using the collection Painted Sports Applique, which is number 12472 from EmbroideryOnline.com. And these are the designs that are included in this collection. As you can see, they are all a highly graphic, um, sort of stylized um, sport, and you've got the eight of the major sports included here. I really liked this collection because I think it's perfect for when you need to do a team t-shirt or a team project. It's very easy to come in and customize this with your team colors and also to add names to it. So let's take a look at how to do a t-shirt with one of these designs. Now because I'm doing this on a child's t-shirt I did end up reducing the size of this design um, and I did that using our free art sizer program. Um, if you visit our website you'll see a section called software and under software you'll see a section that says art sizer and art sizer is a free program that allows you to size our designs for whichever machine that you need them for in order to get started on this t-shirt i want to place this on the left chest which is a really common placement for a t-shirt and you'll see that on the left chest we need to put it in the correct location there are some great tools out there to help you get the exact right location i'm going to show you the um, the trick that I learned when I first started in the embroidery industry and that is you start at the top of the neck and at where the neck seam meets the shoulder seam now if you've got something that's a different other something other than a crew neck a boat neck or a large neck shirt then this trick won't work but if you've got a typical crew neck shirt you're going to start up here where the shoulder seam meets the collar or the neck uh, line here at the uh, crew neck and you're going to start here and you're going to have a line that's going straight down from there and you just want to keep that in parallel with your t-shirt so keep everything lined up and straight and then what I'm going to do is mark that if you're using a light colored shirt let me highly recommend the heat um, sensitive pens that actually will disappear with heat. Uh, they're called friction pens and they're really nice because just a quick shot with the warm iron and that mark is going to completely disappear. So that's going to be my uh, vertical or actually horizontal center of my design. Make a vertical line to mark the horizontal center of your design. And now we need to mark the vertical center. To come up with the vertical center, what I'm going to do is measure the armhole or the arm side. And we want to measure, this one ended up being about 7 inches from the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the armhole. And what I want to do is determine about halfway down that arm seam or that, arms hole, uh, that arm side. So in this case it's going to be about 3.5 inches. So what we'll do is measure that three and a half inches down and we're now going to make a line that is perpendicular to our original line. Now once we've marked the center of our shirt, a really important trick to getting great embroidery on a t-shirt is to turn it inside out. Before you start trying to put stabilizer on it or do anything else to the t-shirt, turn it completely inside out. Um, so now we have turned this t-shirt inside out and laid it flat and you can just barely see the marks showing through the back of the shirt. Um, it's really helpful again if you've got a light colored shirt if you mark this dark enough that you can see the mark through the back of the shirt. Now we add the stabilizer to the shirt and you notice that what, by doing it this way I'm not fighting trying to get the stabilizer inside the shirt I'm actually laying it on top of the fabric because I'm working from the back side. Whenever I attach this stabilizer I'm going to use an adhesive spray to adhere the layers together. Um, if you don't like to use an adhesive spray you can skip this step uh, but it makes it a lot harder to work from the inside out if you don't use the adhesive spray. So by using adhesive spray I can layer those pieces of stabilizer, two pieces of stabilizer, and for a t-shirt we're going to recommend that you use a nylon mesh. Now this is sometimes called like a poly mesh. It's not actually made from polyester. It's made from nylon, but it's a soft um, mesh stabilizer. It's a cutaway stabilizer. So we're, we're going to recommend a mesh cutaway stabilizer whenever you are doing a t-shirt like this. And the reason we recommend that mesh cutaway is it's not going to shadow through the t-shirt. So when you're looking at it from the other side you won't see the stabilizer shadow that you'll sometimes see if you use a heavier um, weight cutaway. 
that mesh makes it where you can't really see it. Now I also personally like to use a beige if I'm using a really light colored t-shirt. Um, it tends to fade away a little bit better than white does. Now once you've attached this stabilizer to the back of the t-shirt, we're now going to turn the t-shirt, flip it over. It's still inside out, but we've flipped it over. And you can see the label on the inside there. And so now we're going to lift the bottom of the shirt up in order to get to the area we want to embroider on. So we start by lifting the bottom of the shirt. And as you can see, we're working our way up here until we can see the area that we have marked. We want to always work from the bottom up when we're pulling that excess fabric out of the way. Don't ever, ever go down through the neck. Um, when you go down through the neck, you really risk uh, that fabric folding back in on itself and you end up sewing the project together, uh, which is not what you want to do. So you're going to lift it up from the bottom and that way you can see the area that you need to hoop. And now you can see here's this nice flat area and because we worked with it the way we did by turning it inside out and then laying it flat on the table, we have a nice flat area ready for us to hoop. So at this point we're going to slide the bottom hoop under the t-shirt, trying to keep it as flat as possible but we're just going to slide that bottom hoop in. If you're going to be hooping the t-shirt, you want to use the smallest hoop possible. Um, I find on t-shirt projects most often I use my medium hoop, which is about a 4x4 four four embroidery area. And then we're going to add the inside ring. Now the perspective and the way I took this picture, I actually um, took this and it was a little crooked and I fixed it later. So you'll see that yes, that line is not quite straight. We actually fixed that before we actually started stitching. But you can see the basic idea here is we want to get that vertical line in line with the vertical marks on our hoop template and that horizontal line in line with the horizontal marks on our hoop template. The center of the hoop does not necessarily have to be where the center of the design is. As you can see, because of where the collar is on this shirt, I can't quite get the hoop too much further up or else I'm not going to be able to actually hoop it. So what that ends up meaning is that instead of my design being right in the center of the hoop, it's a little bit above center. That's not a problem as long as you keep everything in parallel. So as long as you keep it hooped straight and your design is the size that will fit, it's okay if it's not right in the very center of the hoop. But what you have to remember is when you get it to the machine, you do have to move the center of your design to match the center that you have marked on your fabric. And then you can see that's what we're doing here. We get the project onto the machine and I've got it hooped and I'm ready to start stitching, but before I do so, I've got to go to my machine and adjust the center position of the design to match the center that I have marked on my fabric. And then once I do that, I can begin stitching the design. And when you're stitching a design on a t-shirt, we're going to recommend that you use a ballpoint needle. And it's really easy to be tempted to skip this step and just use a sharp needle, especially if you're using titaniums and they last a long time. Um, it's tempting to just leave the same needle in and not bother to change it. But I promise it will be worth it in the long run to switch to a ballpoint needle when you're stitching on a t-shirt, especially lighter weight t-shirts. If you stitch with a sharp needle on a t-shirt, you're going to find little holes will start to form around the edges of your design. And that's because that sharp needle will actually pierce the knit fibers and that gets a little run in it. Just think of like run and pantyhose. The same thing happens to your t-shirt. So use a ballpoint needle. As you can see, we start to stitch the design and we get to the part of the design that's an applique. You can see that this design has a uh, white line here that I've stitched because this is going to be a soccer ball so I'm going to put white fabric here. We stitched the guide area. Now what I'm going to do is actually take the hoop off the machine but not take the fabric out of the hoop and I'm going to lightly spray a piece of applique fabric with a temporary adhesive spray place it down onto this project. And you can see here we've placed that fabric onto the project placed it back onto the machine and stitched that guide stitch again. The next step is to actually take a pair of sharp 
curved embroidery scissors and cut away everything outside this line. You want to cut up as close to this stitching line as you can, being careful not to cut anything underneath it and um, not to cut through that stitching line, but you want to cut right up to that stitching line. I recommend that you do this off the machine. It's very, very difficult to do it while it's still sitting on the machine. So take the hoop off the machine. Just be careful not to take the fabric out of the hoop and lay it on a flat surface while you're doing this step. So you can see I've cut this out and now we come back and it's going to do a stitch that's called a tack down stitch that will hold down the edges of this applique. And then the covering of this particular stitch on this design actually happens by some extra stitches that come in in different colors to kind of cover the edges of this design. As you can see here, the cover is done in several different colors. So we've just got a loose tack down and then the actual covering is done with other colors. You can see the finished design here. I've added um, the name and number for this particular one and you can see how well this works for teams where you can add the name um, or the team name to this and just customize those painted colors to match your team colors. Now when you're done a lot of people worry about what we call hoop burn which is where you can see the mark of the hoop and you can just barely see it in my photograph here but you can see a little crease that's been left by hooping this fabric. If you, when you're putting your hoop into your, uh, we're actually hooping the t-shirt, if you try to force that hoop into the bottom hoop, the inner ring into the outer ring, um, it can cause a, a somewhat of a permanent burn there. It can get a crease that won't go away um, because it's actually creating kind of a friction burn. Um, kind of think of it like you're permanently creasing it. To prevent that from happening, just make sure that you really loosen the screw on your outer ring as you go to put the inner ring inside. However, even if you do it right and you have it nice and loose when you put the inner ring inside and then you tighten the screw, you still will get a crease when you're done. But this crease can be removed and as you can see I've actually come in and wet this and I will use, uh, a lot of times I'll use a lightweight starch, just a really light starch or a water, a spray uh, bottle with water and come in along this line. Just steam is usually not going to be enough to get out that mark. You actually probably will need to wet it in some way to get rid of that line and that's going to press it in place. Also I recommend when you're pressing this that's going to get rid of these marks that heat's going to get rid of your marks um, but when you're pressing this um, either place a press cloth over your embroidery or flip your embroidery over and press it from the back um, and preferably into a pressing cloth. I like to use a terry cloth pressing cloth because that way the embroidery stitches can kind of sink into it. And that actually concludes um, stitching up our embroidered design on our t-shirt. Um, hope you've gotten a few good tips out of this and we'd love to hear feedback from you on what tutorials you would like to see next. Um, just drop us a line in the comments, uh, send us a note on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash embroidery online or you can also send us an email to support at oesd.com. Thanks so much.